there, Shauna Karish here with another Ask Shauna Answer, coming to you from Via Nova. All righty. So this uh, question says, uh, Shauna, I've been following you for a while and I do clicker training with my horse. My question is this. I've seen quite a few videos in the last few months of positive reinforcement trainers using rope halters. I was under the impression that rope halters were more severe than standard halters. I would think that if this were the case, wouldn't positive reinforcement trainers not use them? I'm looking forward to hearing your opinion on this. Thank you in advance. Okay, Elizabeth, this is this is a good question, and, and it's a matter of preference, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to tell you how they work. So when I first started looking at riding, you know, and I was riding, and then I saw rope halters, I thought, I love those. Look how light they are, and, and they are kind of cool looking. And, and then I soon learned that they're actually, they're, they're built on aversive pressure for sure. So like a regular halter, we pull on it, it creates pressure, but a rope halter, it has knots strategically located at specific points that are nerve centers. So that makes the, um, that makes the rope halter kind of like you said, it makes them kind of harsh because by design, the weight of a lead rope can make the the can create pressure on those pressure spots because the knots are there specifically because they're they're you know if you have a pebble in your shoe <laughs> you notice you know so it's the same kind of thing so the rope halters are designed they're really designed by the natural horsemanship movement so that's where they come from and the rope halters were designed to to give extra control is kind of what they will use it for oftentimes in the traditional world so i know that they look kind of cool and they can be kind of light but the truth is if they pull for some reason and you have to pull back you're creating pretty aversive pressure in addition a rope is much smaller gauge and the smaller the gauge the worse it is but a rope is a smaller gauge than a flat broad um like a, a leather halter which is you know has a uh, a wider band so when pressure is applied it's applied across the whole band but if a pressure is applied if like if somebody put wire around your wrist versus a wide band of leather around your wrist and they pulled you by it which one would be more severe <laughs> Clearly the one that's narrower, the narrower gauge makes it a stronger, uh, it makes it a stronger aid, as it were. So it's it's up to you. And and I have worked with people that are using, you know, rope halters because they, they don't feel comfortable enough to, to, to move away from them yet. And I said, that's okay when you're ready, when you feel confident and your horse is leading, you will, you know. And so it, it is its own opinion. You, you can have your own opinion about it. And while we're talking about halters, one of the things I also want to do, I've also seen people ship in rope halters. No, I really, really, that's something I will really say, do not ever do that. If something happened, it's, you know, just the movement of the trailer is going to be creating aversive pressure. And that's, and if something horrible happened, you know, you have nylon that doesn't break. And, and so I never use nylon halters. And if you do use a nylon halter, use one with a leather piece in it so it can break away. So, so if something happens and their head gets caught, it will break versus uh, nylon is made to be, and like those nylon halters are made out of basically climber's rope. So they're very, very, very strong in, in addition, but, but so are nylon halters. So ideally using at least one that has a leather breakaway piece or using a leather halter. I like padded halters. So I really like them to be as soft as they can be because honestly, the halter is there for me more or less for dealing in a crowd or in a place that other people feel ill at ease or as I'm teaching something or sometimes, you know, I also do want them to understand a halter and to move with the halter. And, and if they do feel pressure on the halter, I want them to, I will teach it with positive reinforcement, but I want them. So it's the pressure isn't the cue that hasn't been taught that the pressure is simply a cue. So as I first teach a baby to lead, 
And so I first put on the halter first and you say, okay, learn to wear your halter. That's all. You just put it on and we do our sessions. So they get used to this thing on their head and then it's time for them to lead about, learn about leading. So then I put the halter and I attach the lead rope. And at first I just put it over their neck and I just let them get used to that kind of funny feeling now. Then the next thing I do is when it's time to teach them to lead because they need to understand traditional leading because if they go to the vet clinic if somebody has to evacuate them if they're in a they go out of our hands for some reason i want them to be successful in the world and to respond kindly in the world or respond very agreeably because if they don't they don't understand and they get a little fearful about it they can often find themselves getting in trouble because people think they're they start labeling them and saying they're being bratty they're being stubborn they're spoiled they're and it's it's not anything to do with those pieces it's just that they don't know so i really want to teach them to understand that so when it's time to have a little pressure i will have a target right in front of me and I'll give the slightest little pressure and they say target and I, I pressure and I let it go. So it's just like, think. so they feel it for a moment. They're probably like, what's that? And I say target. And then pretty soon when they hear that little, feel that little, you know, that little tiny pressure tug that, that goes right away. There's no escalating pressure. There's no continuing pressure. It's not persistent pressure. If they don't get it, I need to go back to the target. So I don't do it again and do it again. And do it again. I think you don't get it. I need to come up with something else. So if there is, so pretty soon when I just go dink, they go, oh, go forward to the target. And so it's the beginning of teaching them what that pressure feels like, but it's a cue taught to positive reinforcement. And that can be a confusing subject for a lot of people, but, but it really is, I want them to understand pressure or tactile cues is really what it is. Cause that's, it's a tactile cue. I, they feel it versus seeing it or smelling it or visualizing it. So I want to teach them tactile cues so that they can succeed in the world. Because I think not to do that is really a disservice to them, just in case, you know, I think they're never going to go anywhere but be with me. And I will always be in their world to protect them and make sure it's all good. But you know, life's full of uncertainties too. So anyway, so thank you for your question. I think it's a really good question and it's just something to consider. So you can use them if you want to, but they were, they were started in the natural horsemanship world and they, it is, it, it, it really is designed with aversive pressure. So even if you don't use it, you just hook the lead rope, there's pressure there right away that is kind of a persistent pressure on sensitive nerve centers. Anyway, so there you go. That's my, that's my little bit of education for today. So Elizabeth, thank you for your question. If you have more questions, if you, you know how to get a hold of me, you go to ask Shauna at shaunacarish.com and you will find a, a page a tab that says ask Shauna. That's where you can submit your questions. You can also find my podcast, Equine Clicker 101, which is full of lots of good, uh, lessons, including leading, if you have a leading issue by chance. <laughs> anyway, and, and then of course you can find uh, products and you can find more about Vianova training and what we're doing out here in New Mexico. Anyway, so thanks again. And hopefully that gives all you listeners an idea where to go if you have your own questions. Okay. Well, until next time. Bye-bye.